Good morning everybody. How are you all today? I hope you're well. Oh, I feel full of joie de vivre today. We've got another warm, dry day. It's not going to last though. The clouds are already gathering. The wind is picking up. I think we might have a bit of a windy one today. I did try to affix the moth that Jay sent me to Ooh, just in that under the camera but my the, the mic bit of my camera is too it's massive it's all across the bottom I couldn't fix it I'll think of something one day but yes I'm really glad it's dry today because I need to <laughs> get the get the cogs going Vivi um, I'm just giddy this morning because I've had so many oh there go the lentils again need to do the lentils yeah I've had just so many lovely encounters this morning and let's just put a proper little spring in my step focus for me on the day in hand so the big thing today is to think about gathering things which I want to be dry <laughs> so dried beans the last of my lavender harvest I need to start harvesting some calendula seed. <clears throat> There's a lot still to come. I'll show you that when I do it. So I'll show you, hopefully be able to show you the, the different stages with the calendula so you know the, the sort of optimum moment for picking them. But yes, yeah, so this little, this little window of dryness, I need to make the most of it because, oh, we're gonna start getting wet. That's great. The garden needs all those plants which are still growing. They really could do with a good soaking. Now, interestingly, just quickly, oh, cheerio, Rusty, on the subject of watering, because I was mentioning in a video, a couple of videos back about, it's when I was doing the podding party. Oh, more of that in a second. But I was mentioning my sort of daily visits to the garden and I was talking about harvesting and watering. What I didn't make clear is on those occasions I'm generally I'm just watering things in pots so my little mini hugel cultures that beautiful grow bag from Bernadette the two blueberries which are in pots the chamomile that's in a bucket that I still, <laughs> ah, still haven't planted into the herb bed oh maybe that's a job I can do today yes yeah, so it's not so I haven't actually watered the garden for about about three weeks or so now it has been dry it has been warm but for most of the plants they're they're sort of pretty much at the end of their lives they've done their producing of produce for want of a better word those things have fattened up and now for most things it's a question of leaving them where they are to dry so I do tend to really scale back on the watering in September and also you know there is water down there so especially for things like the parsnips and carrots I'll let them go and find it the brassicas I probably maybe should have given them all the watering just because they were only planted out what five six weeks or so ago so their root systems are still quite shallow but then again maybe by not watering those roots will have gone down further who knows anyway they're all alive and like I say we're now about to get a lot of rain yay so oh yes about the podding party video um thank you so much for your lovely comments and great feedback the way you all took it was exactly as I wanted it to be in so much as I wanted it to feel like we were all in the room at the same time just hanging out together and you know you might be sewing and you might be knitting and someone else is podding and someone else is chopping beans and I'm podding so it's exactly how I wanted it to feel and that's obviously what you all got from it excuse me a sec so I really enjoyed making it. It was a real change for me. And it's something I've been thinking about playing with in terms of format for quite some time now, because obviously at the end of each month, I, I 
sort of have a little reflect back on that month in my thoughts on series and I know these videos aren't to everyone's taste and that's fine you know we don't all like everything um, but yeah that's become my, the thoughts on strand has become very much I get to the end of the month reflect on how things are going where I could do things better and it's much more of a sort of the bigger picture and sometimes it's the bigger subjects but I've been thinking for some time about having videos which are not dealing with big subjects but just hanging out together and chatting whilst I do a quiet sit-down job such as podding or sewing or the like and um, you know I as I said in that video I hardly ever get time to watch YouTube videos these days it's just I just don't have the time but what I do like is with a couple of channels where it's very much it's not about gardening necessarily but it's just conversation just chat I really like those especially when they're sort of that half hour length because I can put it on listen to it whilst I'm doing something else which at the moment is invariably <laughs> dealing with tomatoes or beans or ah yeah dealing with the kitchen and the mess I create uh, very much Sunday is my create havoc and create mess in the kitchen day so I particularly love Richard and Paul's Sunday chat because <laughs> it always comes out in the late afternoon sort of four five six o'clock and it's perfect timing and it's the perfect material for me to just listen to <gasps> those blooming lentils again for me to listen to as I'm getting on with another job so anyway um, the point is I was really glad with your response to the podding party so I am going to um, probably create a new strand I don't know what I'm going to call it yet I was thinking Sunday on the sofa because because that's what it is isn't it but it's not by any means going to be a regular thing unlike say Richard and Paul who put out every single week honestly I don't know how they manage it um, yes yeah, so it's not going to be a massively regular thing like I said it's not going to be to everyone's taste but for those of you who did enjoy that who enjoyed listening whilst doing your own quiet sit down jobs like I say whether it was sewing or knitting or your own podding because sometimes this is what it all boils down to sometimes you need to do stuff that's needs your eyes you need to look at what you're doing so you can't watch a video but you can listen to it. So yes, there will be some more of those at some point in the future. I've got a load of sewing to do, so there might be one soonish. Anyway, never mind, I'm digressing so much already. <sighs> the clouds are getting greyer by the minute. Like I say, it's warm, it's lovely, but I really want to prioritise harvesting dried things while they are dry. So yeah, let's go and get on with that. It's suddenly getting really blowy, so I think I'd better be quick sticks about this. Um, one of the great things about beans, one of the joys of them is they're all so different. So for picking all my dried ones today, I'm just going to pick them all in the same basket. Great, because not only are their pods very different, but the beans contained therein are very different. This arch set of arches most of the beans have already dried uh, quite a bit yeah they're, they're, most of them are pretty pretty dry so I shall have most of these off today however this whole this whole section is trail of tears and some of them are really quite fleshy still uh, and obviously there's there's a little bit of you know leafage foliage on them still too so any like that I'll just I'll leave until after this week of rain that we're having but I'm definitely having off well you can probably hear that in my fingers you can hear above the wind just how dry some of them are already let me show you a couple oh so windy such a beautiful little glossy black 
bean. There you go. That's just three of them to show you for now. So, the, the Trail of Tears have been prolific. There's absolutely tons of them, which is great. And there's way more than I originally intended to have. So where I've got three sets of, sets of poles within each arch, so I've got three, six, nine, twelve in the row. I was going to have six for Trail of Tears and six for Runner Beans because I like to let my runner beans get really big and fat and stringy and gnarly and then harvest them for demi sec. However, I don't know if you remember, but not a single one of my runner beans germinated. Not a single one, and I have no idea why. So I plugged the gaps with some trail of tears, and this is my first year growing them. And like I said, they've been really prolific and at their really young stage, they started off green, like, uh, like little dwarf French beans. They were really beautiful to eat the whole pod when they were at that stage. Uh, but they were coming so thick and fast, I just couldn't keep up with eating them like that. Now I could at that stage, I could have harvested them, chopped them up, popped them in the freezer. But, knowing how full my freezers get, <laughs> I decided I'll just leave them all for drying now. The only thing is, the bean is really quite tiny. It is a really tiny bean, so it's going to take more beans to make a meal than it would with, say, obviously the Gigantes. So, will I grow them again? Yes, I think I will. I think I will. They've been a joy to look at. I mean, not that, you know, obviously in my garden everything has got to be, first and foremost, it's got to be food for me. But if something can be beautiful as well, then that's a winner in my book. The fact that I could have some fresh in the summer as the whole, the whole pod, brilliant, liked that. And of course now for these dried ones, well, it's so easy to store them. It would be you know, it's a no-brainer for storing. So, the answer is, yes, I'll certainly be doing them again next year. Will I do as many? I'm not sure. What I'm not gonna do next year, <laughs> these are supposed to be all my baloshi. I've got three bushes down there. They're all supposed to be climbers, they weren't. And one climber here. And the color is amazing on this one. This was not, not what I was expecting. Way down here, I'll show you. They're um, they're pretty, pretty super whoopla, super duper dry already. So yes, these are all getting picked today too. Let me just show you one inside. And like I say, because all the beans are so different, it won't matter if they all pop and go everywhere because. Oh, I can't see on the screen. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, because, whoa, don't lose them, Vivi. Precious. Yeah, they're so distinctive. I'll know exactly what they are. Uh, and then just back here, this is my helder. Can you hear me over the wind? Let me show you a the helder. Now this is one of the only climbers, apart from now Tale of Tears, one of the only climbers I grow for eating the whole bean. It's a cross between a runner and a French bean. So what you get is these lovely, long, slim, beautifully tender green pods that, so essentially I grow for eating the, the whole pod. And then obviously I save my own seed. But of course, let me show you these beauties. As with any of our bean seeds, where I've got excess of seed for saving, I simply eat them like I do with any of my other dried beans. So that's Trail of Tears, Bolotti, rubbish, Helga, and then I've got some the Spare Coca Sophie, which I've already shown you, and then finally, finally Esther. This one 
is the one I've been calling Rattle all season. Let me show you some of these. Again, beautiful, beautiful little beans. I don't know if you're going to pick these up because the colour is so almost flesh coloured. Absolutely gorgeous. But the plants themselves really didn't do too well. I think, what did I end up with? I've got two plants. Two plants out of, well, I did six direct. I did six as backups. I should have had 12. I ended up with two. Some of it was sog attack. Some of them, they just keeled over. And they haven't been terribly prolific on the actual vine. So I'm really glad I tried them, but I'm not taking up space in the garden next year with them. I need something that's going to give me a good crop for me to scoff. Let me give you a closer look at all these different varieties. So these, these are the beautiful Trail of Tears. Absolutely dripping with them. It's harder to see the ones that's come down here that are dripping here uh, because as they get drier and drier, so they start green, they go deep purple, then almost black, but then as they dry, they start to go into this almost sort of mottled grey. So again, tons to pick on there and on here. But then over here, I don't know if you're going to even be able to make them out. It's so pathetic. But this, a few here, a few here, here, and then just a couple at the bottom. That's it for the rattles. So you see what I mean about that's investing a lot of space and time in a plant which is not going to feed me. I'm um, just back up the row. These were all the, the late, late helders. So I did have a few more of them green, but this lot now, this is for seed saving. And like I say, any spares I will scoff. Actually, I'm going to give some of this seed away this year or next spring, so there might not be spare to scoff. Then the very pathetic poultry bullochy down here I mean it's just so this is what I mean about the bush versus pole so how many is on there two four six eight ten twelve 15, 14, maybe say 15 because I just took two off as opposed to coming this way because of the sun as opposed to on the climbing ones I've got Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, say thirty. So for the same amount of soil and basically the same amount of attention and care. I've got thirty pods from this one as opposed to fifteen from that. Goodbye, Bolotti.
This is taking me forever. Oh my goodness. And why is it? You think you've stripped apart and you look back two seconds later and there's another one. It's just like when they're green. You would think that at this stage they'd be using it Coco de Sophie, Coco de Sophie, Coco Sophie, I'm doing, and also over here, did I do that one already? No, the Gigantes, you can see the Gigantes is really green still, and there are quite a few green ones in the top, so just leave it completely be. Quite a lot of the Trail of Tears are still really quite moist, so I've left those on too. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's not something to do in a rush, but that's lovely, isn't it? It's, it's always good to find these jobs which don't require much thinking, that you just get completely into. Once I've done these, some more the arches, I will start to have a look at the Coco de Pampol, um, because... I, I know I keep saying it, but I think, I really think today is going to be the last pick for Demi Sack. Um, they're really, really going over now, and yeah, I don't think they'll come to much now. I might, okay, this is what I will do, thinking on my feet. I will pick any that are really dry for seed saving. And then the rest, I'm going to just leave because with all this rain we're doing in the next few days, although it's, it feels like it might be coming this afternoon, but, um, the ones that are green, they might just fatten up and yellow up a little bit. We'll see. The main thing was to get all of these other ones off. I've got loads to do still, and look. I think I need another basket. Oh, it weighs a ton. But what I love is, I wonder if this will pick up. Can I do it without spilling? Isn't that a lovely sight and sound? Gosh, it really is getting dark. I think I'm gonna scoot these all to the shed, get another basket and hurry up while I'm at it. Well, my joie de vivre has just disappeared in the space of one phone call. And I don't know why with the timing, but it always seems like I get one of these phone calls when I'm in the garden. I just had a call from my um, great aunt's carer, or oh, the care team. Uh, she's fine, she's absolutely fine. But apparently half of the bathroom floor has collapsed. It's a, it's a bungalow, it's all on the ground floor. Um, but it's one of the, it's one of the kind of the stresses and worries of sort of caring at, at distance because um, just in there's my little mate Gary or oh, he'll cheer me up um, yeah it's 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 just one of those it's a minefield of firstly the distance but also because I don't drive um, what's the time now it's about half two three o'clock in the afternoon if I go down there now, I won't get there till about six o'clock. So there's no point in me going today because even if, well, first I'd need to call some builders because in the past, it's the kind of thing I would have probably tried to fix myself. But partly it's, partly it's a time issue and partly the idea of relaying a floor with my knees, oh, can't bear the thought of it. So there's no point in me going today right now because like I said by the time I get there it'll be six o'clock I'm not going to get a builder out at that time but also I need to go home google some uh, builders for the area and um, phone them and see where I can get someone out and there was another little problem too but that's that's more easily dealable with oh, bless it. it is a worry it is a worry um, 
just being at distance, I mean, the, the good thing, oh my goodness, I've suddenly gone really dark, haven't I? Uh, the good thing is that the care team seem really good and, all right, Rusty. Oh, Rusty's giving me so much. Do you recognize that I need some love, buddy? Can we have a kiss? Mm. Um, yeah, the care team are really good and they, and they, they do, keep me posted all the time even really little things so me getting down there once a week or once a fortnight I generally can stay on top of most of her needs oh what a pity what a pity I've hardly made a dent in my gardening today all I've done is been picking 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 and actually despite that moment of real brightness behind me the clouds are getting thicker, you can feel the moisture in the air, the wind has really picked up. So I haven't harvested my rock and core beans. That's the the little yellow waxy ones that I ate for the whole pod. You can also eat the beans, but I haven't harvested my seed saving ones. They'll just have to wait. I've got I've got a few to be getting on with. <laughs> Look at it, isn't that a beautiful sight? So this is a mixture of Gigantes, Coco Sophie, Trail of Tears, Battles, that sort of thing. And then outside, and I must grab it in a second, I've got my red bucket chug is about half full with Coco de Pampol. Plus, as I was getting those off, this is the seed saving Coco de Pampol. I've also harvested another, about a kilo of fresh cocoa for me to freeze demi sec so I've got a feeling there will be a, another sofa on Sunday Sunday on the sofa coming soon of me podding okay so just quickly I'm really distracted now and I need to get home um, with beans that I save for drying for either this is either for seed storing or for storing to eat I will probably actually take this lot home with me right now uh, I'm not going to have a chance to pod so if I know that I'm not going to have a chance to pod them straight away what I would normally do is up on the drying rack I've got some old hessian sacks so just put the hessian sacks on so that the nothing can drop through the little holes and just spread all of them in their pods just spread them all out in a single layer so they've got good air circulation it's warm and dry in here and they can finish drying then at that stage when they're really good and dry take them home pod them spread them out as the podded as the podded seed uh, bean seed same difference isn't it oh, it's a beautiful crunch isn't it i'm just thinking actually maybe this wouldn't make a good sofa on sunday sunday on the sofa whatever i'm going to call it because it's so noisy but oh, beauties absolutely oh don't drop they're always so precious all of them two gorgeous fat gigantes so yes when the really dry stage i get them out spread them on my trays just to give them a really really thorough final drying then pop them into airtight containers pop them in the free freezer for three days and when they've had their three day freeze bring them out don't take the lid off at that stage leave them to come back to room temperature and then either store them in my large jars in the kitchen for eating or in my little jars that I save down here for my seed saving. So well listen I'm, I'm you know the day has not oh and here comes Poppy are you gonna give me a cuddle too Poppykins? I need cuddles I need a cuddle today Poppy. Yeah this day has not gone according to plan. There were, all sorts of jobs I wanted to do. Oh, you know what? Nothing's important. My great aunt's the important thing. That can all wait. And even with the beans which are quite dry, they're going to get soaked in the next few days. But then the sun will come back. And who knows, there might be a day when I think, you know, there's a break in the showers. I might come and do some more picking. And those which are, which were dry, and are going to become wet in the rain, I can bring those home and just get them spread out at home where they can do some drying. So all is not lost. Fuel deflated, 
I feel a bit weepy actually. Don't weep, Vivi. Just sometimes it's um it's just hard sometimes, isn't it? I don't um I don't I don't begrudge my great aunt anything, but every now and again I just think it's hard when you're trying to sort of be everywhere at once and be everything to everyone and and be everything to myself too. Um, as it is, I feel most days like I've, I've hardly got the energy to get through each day of doing what I need to do for myself. But there we go. Probably what I need to do right now is, you know, like I said, there's no there's no hurry to get on a train right now. I need to go home and make phone calls, of course, but right now I think the best thing I can do is just sit here for a few minutes with this beautiful girl, oh, poppykins, have my cuddle, have my cry if necessary. I think sometimes having a cry is great because it releases the tension and that's obviously what this is. So that's what I will do. Sorry to end on a slightly down note today, but that's the reality of life isn't it so i will bid you all a fond farewell and i'm sure the next time you see me i'll be back to the joie de vivre vivi <laughs> i hope so so until then happy harvesting of all your dried beans gosh it does take a time doesn't it um happy shaking them to see just how dry they are that sound oh, i love it love it love it so yes, happy harvesting to you all. I will catch up with you again before too long, I have no doubt. But in the meantime, please take care of yourselves and your aging, aged relatives. Bye for now. <laughs>